Good morning, readers. Well, we are almost into the new year, and uh, my last release of the year is Henry, Breaking the Pattern. Uh, this is a release of, this is a re-release of a book that was previously published as Deviation. So if you're one of the uh, three people or so that read it under that title, then you don't need to buy it again. Uh, but it has been uh, updated, re-edited, new cover, new title, and I'm uh, really excited about releasing it again uh, to a larger audience now. And so I am going to do a reading, uh, a short bit from Chapter 1 and Chapter 2 of Henry. Henry tried to enter the room quietly and remain inconspicuous, sort of hard when the class was silent for a lecture and he arrived halfway through the period. The blackboard was already full of notes students were copying into their binders. He scanned the room for an empty desk and hoped the one he chose was actually free, and not just empty because someone had gone to the restroom or was sick that day. He slipped in as quietly as possible, praying that the teacher would just keep going. But Mrs. Phillips stopped, mid-sentence, watching him. Henry sat, head down, his slightly too long hair falling down over his eyes. Henry's round framed glasses slid down his sweat-slicked nose. He pushed them back up and leaned his forehead on one hand as he opened his notebook and prepared to take notes with the other, barricading himself from her scrutiny. Are you Henry? Mrs. Phillips approached his desk. The rest of the class watched with avid interest. Yeah, Henry admitted. He tried to look confidently into her face and saw her eyes widen slightly when she saw his face clearly for the first time. Let's go talk in the hall, she suggested. With the rest of the students' eyes on him, Henry followed Mrs. Phillips out of the room and into the hall. She shut the door as the class began to buzz with gossip. She looked Henry over once more. What happened to your eye? Henry grimaced nervously. Looks like someone belted me, huh? He suggested. I got up in the night to go to the can, he exclaimed. Didn't turn on the light. Slipped on my baby brother's toy. I don't know what I hit. The doorknob or the counter or what. Knocked me cold. My ma freaked out this morning, made me go to the hospital to get it x-rayed. That's how come I'm late. Wow, she smiled reassuringly. I just wanted to be sure. You realize school started two days ago? She cocked an eyebrow. Henry's face warmed and a drop of sweat trickled down his back. We were on vacation, he explained. I guess my ma got the start date mixed up. If she doesn't write things down, she gets the days wrong. Okay, go sit down. I'll get you the list of supplies you need and give you the assignments you missed. Thanks, Henry breathed a sigh of relief. They went back into the classroom. Henry slipped into his seat, sweating heavily with everyone's eyes on him. Great way to start school. Two days late and with a black eye. Good way to stay unnoticed. At least Mrs. Phillips didn't seem to doubt his story. He waited for his heart to slow back down to normal, glancing around for any of his friends. There were a couple of acquaintances, no one close but then he wasn't that close to anyone. He rubbed his palms on his pants and plucked his shirt away from his body to encourage it to dry faster. Mrs. Phillips gave him a supply list and assignments that he'd missed. She smiled and returned to the front of the room to continue her lecture. Henry read over the assignment and got to work. With any luck, he'd be caught up by the end of the day. All right, and jumping ahead to chapter two. At the end of the school day after the dismissal bell, Students were hanging around the hallways, visiting, catching up with old friendships, and trying out new ones. Already, there were a few couples lip-locked in front of lockers or in corners, testing out the new freedoms of high school. In junior high, such displays had been immediately broken up by teachers. In high school, they were ignored. Henry didn't hang around or look for any of his friends. He hurried straight home. He dropped his books on the kitchen table. Bobby was crying in the bedroom. Ma? Ma, are you home? Henry called, looking around for her. There was no reply. Henry made his way to his room, where Bobby was standing in the crib, screaming. He held onto the bars tightly. The baby's face was red and sweaty. He sounded frantic, like he'd been crying for a long time. When Henry appeared, Bobby immediately reached out his arms, his screams changing in pitch to an urgent, Ah! 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 Henry reached in and picked him up. Bobby clung to him, burying his face in Henry's shirt, his sobs starting to slow. His fingers dug into Henry, sharp nails catching at his skin. He was holding on so tightly that Henry figured if he let him go, he'd hang there without support like a baby monkey. 
Henry bounced and cuddled him. There, you're okay, he murmured. Henry's here, you're okay. There were three empty bottles in the crib. Henry collected them with one hand, wedging one under his opposite armpit so he could carry them all without putting Bobby down. He went into the kitchen. Shh, 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 he comforted as he jiggled Bobby. He prepared a fresh bottle of formula for Bobby with his free hand and held it in front of him. There you go. Why don't you put that in your mouth for a bit? Bobby drank the bottle around sniffles and gasps. Henry took him into the bathroom to change his reeking diaper. He gently wiped Bobby's bottom, which, was, which started him crying again. His skin was bright red and inflamed, obviously painful to the touch. Henry disposed of the dirty diaper and left Bobby bare-bottomed. There, you can play like that for a while. You can play like that while I study and get a snack. Henry put Bobby down on the kitchen floor and made another jam sandwich for himself. He sat down over his books, eating the sandwich slowly while he read, glancing over at Bobby every few minutes to make sure he was happy crawling around and kept out of mischief. The front door opened. Henry looked over his shoulder to see who it was. Clint, a big man wearing a construction hard hat, looking unshaven as usual. He was rank with sweat. Hi, Henry looked back at his books, uninterested in further interaction. Hey, Hank, Clint grunted. Don't call me that, Henry objected. It's Henry. Yeah, whatever. Clint didn't care. He had no intention of showing Henry the respect of calling him by his preferred name. You seen my mom? Henry asked. He leaned back in his chair and rubbed the space between his eyebrows. No, she not home? No. Obviously. Why would Henry ask if she was there? Clint wasn't the brightest bulb in the box. Clint watched Bobby playing on the floor. How come Squirt's got no diaper? He got left in a dirty diaper. It burns his skin. The baby book says the best thing is to let his skin get some air, Henry explained. What if he whizzes on the floor? I'll clean it up. Okay, Clint looked around. I'll see you around then, Hank. You're not staying? Not if Dory's not home. He adjusted his hard hat, showing a white band of skin where the hat's front support kept the sun and dirt from darkening his face. And he turned and left. Henry sat for a moment, listening to the retreating footsteps. He shrugged and went back to work. Okay, so a little teaser for you from Henry, Breaking the Pattern. This is the first book in the Breaking the Pattern series. And uh, on my blog post today, I've got links to a number of other new releases that you can check out. Start uh, with some new books in the new year. And I will have a New Year's post up tomorrow as well, so you can check out both of those posts. I will post a link below to Henry. All right, talk to you next week.